We're close at ever willing. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the GCB. My name's Salvatore and today we're back at Everwilling Health and Fitness, my home ground. But a bit different this time, we'll be interviewing Charles, the owner, and a very close friend of mine to give you a bit of understanding what our gym is about. Let's go. guys so this is Charles a very close friend of mine and the owner of Everwilling Health Fitness and he's gonna talk about what we're about here hey guys uh, we're about mainly enjoying your fitness everyone's welcome and we really 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 want to make fitness fun for people because if you find it fun you're gonna come back we make sure everyone enjoys it so you come back that's it so Charles what is the main reason why people come to this wonderful gym Apart from myself, nah, it's more the vibe we have here. We work a lot with uh, mental um, health as well. So we want to make people feel good about themselves. Also, we want everyone to get fit and healthy, but it's more about feeling good about yourself and being around people, like-minded people, and meeting new people and just having fun, really. So Charles, what makes Everwilling different to our competitors? I reckon that's pretty easy. Um, it's more just, especially, Apart from us being the friendliest gym in the area, um, we offer no contracts, no sign-up fees. We never have and we never will because we don't want to just lock people in and take their money for no reason. We want people to come here. Uh, if you're not using it, don't have to pay for it. There you go. One of the great things at Everwilling is that we have a wide range of PTs with different types of credentials. And Charles is going to explain what we do. Um, very versatile, that's why I've got a few different trainers here. Um, myself, I've been doing it 12 years. Um, I do a lot, of, a lot of stuff from weight loss, mental health, uh, training people with disabilities as well. Um, we've got Pete, who's also been in the industry for 12 years. Um, bit of a drill sergeant type style, gets the best out of you. Um, and he does bodybuilding as well, he's won a few bodybuilding competitions. And then you've got Salvatore. He's been doing six years, so a lot of a lot of experience just with the three of us. He's done powerlifting competition. He's done a bodybuilding competition. He does work with uh, disabilities, losing weight, very very versatile. And then we got awesome Ruth, who does a lot of uh, trains a lot of young women, all, all different ages. She's trained athletes before. Does a lot, really good with Pilates, stretching, yoga, that sort of stuff. So we pretty much cover all bases and yeah, we've, everyone's got at least six years of experience. So we all hope we know what we're talking about. So now Charles is gonna run me through a session. God help me. Uh, we're known for these workouts. It's built around team based stuff. So Sal and I are gonna write a few exercises up here and we're gonna work our way down the list and there's gonna be quite a few reps. So it'll take a while, but we both work together, work on our strength and weaknesses and do it as a team really. Uh, 100 push-ups, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write 100 reps for everything. It's going to be all body, it's not going to be all upper body, it's going to be legs, upper body, cardio, core, as you'll see. Between Sal and I, we have to do 100 push-ups, 100 squats, 100 crunches, 100 calories on the rower, and then I'll add some more as well, 100 chin-ups, and we just work our way through the reps. We'll probably do 1,000 reps, so we've got 500 reps each, and by the end of it, we'll be stuffed. That looks pretty easy, I reckon.
guys, so that was a fun workout with Charles. He's a cracker. Come check us out. Uh, everyone will be in the description below or just check us out on Instagram just about here. Um, like always, guys, we're just, we're just heaps of laughs here. So much fun. There is no, like, BS. It's just awesome. So come check us out and have some fun. But other than that, let's go check out the car. So today, guys, we have a 2017 Lotus Exige 350 Sport. And before I go into specs and all that, I'm just gonna say this off the bat, if you're watching this video, this is the most impractical car to buy for the road. It's a race car for the road. So if you're looking at buying a sports car, make sure you have a car at home that you can use every day because you would not be using this. But in saying so, I love this car and I respect it so much and I love everything about it. I love how impractical it is. I love the fact that it doesn't have power steering. I love the fact that it doesn't have all the creature comforts as most cars. So I can't fault it at all. I love that because I'm a car enthusiast and any other car enthusiast would love this car. Just, just about the history of Lotus and just the car itself. But that is that. Let's talk about specs. So we have a 3.5 liter V6 supercharge. The actual V6 comes from a Toyota Camry, believe it or not. So you've got reliability there, so it's not gonna break, okay? So it's got a Toyota engine, so you'll be sure to know that that would be quite reliable. Um, so, figures, you've got 258 kilowatts, 400 newton meters of torque, zero to 100 in 3.9 seconds, sending all that power to the rear wheels via a manual gearbox, six speed manual gearbox. Um, but yeah, that's it. It's pretty raw, it's pretty basic, guys. There is nothing to it. All the vents on this car are real. There is no fakery. So vents up here are real. Vents down here are real. The vents here are real. It's got a tow hook. I think that's aftermarket. I'm just pretty sure that it doesn't come from uh, Lotus. But all the vents are real. Everything is designed for aerodynamics, keeping this car to the ground. So all the body panels and everything lead to the side, all the way to that massive rear wing to keep this car on the ground. And you can, trust me, you'll notice it when we take it for a test drive. It's insane. Okay, before I go into specs on the side, guys, and talking about the setup of the brakes and the wheels, let's just talk about this roof. So this roof is retractable. You can turn it into a convertible. It takes a long time. So if you have the time, uh, if you want to do it, do it. Otherwise, I like the hard top. I'd rather just that instead of the soft top or the convertible. But yeah, that is retractable, just to let you know. The fronts are 17s, the rears are 18s, okay? So you've got 225s at the front and 265s at the rear. This car in particular is running semi-slicks, all right? So it is quite grippy to the road, but you do have to warm those bad boys up, otherwise you're gonna be sliding everywhere. Your pistons at the front, you've got four pistons at the front and four pistons at the rear, and that is practically it. The car is priced around about $150,000, um, and it weighs about 1,100 kilos. Just over 1,100, just shot. This car is in the pursuit of lightness, so everything is lightened on this car. There's aluminium literally everywhere, and there's literally nothing but a steering wheel, and that's it. You'll see when we get in the interior, it's ridiculous. But yeah, this is car is just honestly, it's true to what it is. It's trying to be a lightweight supercar. So again, guys, about these vents, real? And real. Even though this one's got a bit of fakery here, it does have real right in the center that it sends the air from there around the tires, in through here, around the side of the car, feeds it back through here, and then out the rear. So the vents are real. Aerodynamics is key on this car. So even the under tray is completely, almost completely flat, and just everything serves a purpose for just being stable at high speeds. So I love that too. All right, guys, so the rear end. So you have a real wing, Real carbon wing. This is off the, car, uh, the 430 cup, so the replica. So there's an actual wing that actually does create downforce. There is an actual rear diffuser that actually diffuses. Everything on this car is real, unlike most cars, which is like having a sock in your pants, which most cars have fakery everywhere, which does nothing at all, except for just trying to show off that you have something which you don't. You get what I mean? Anyways, we won't talk about that, we won't go into that, but everything serves a purpose on this car, which I love. I love these LED rear tail lights, they're cool. Um, and I just love the big ass Lotus badge at the back. I just like this car all together, just the way it looks. It's very aggressive, very wide, very intimidating. Um, it's just an awesome looking car. And the exhaust is real. That isn't fake, it's a real exhaust. Uh, and it's quite loud, which we'll show you later on. It sounds insane. But yeah, and I love how low the car is, it's just nuts. All right guys, so practicality. 
Uh, I'm going to open the boot and show you the boot space, which is quite um, small. Uh, besides that, let's just talk about this wing quickly. It is adjustable, which is just sick. I just love that everything on this car is adjustable for track purposes or if you just want a ridiculous fast street car. It's just insane. Um, but yeah, let's open this up. That is quite light. Uh, and there is the engine and the boot space. Um, not a lot, to be fair. Like, it fits my bag and Lucas's camera equipment, but that's about it. Other than that, you're not going to fit much in here. But again, you're not buying that for that purpose. I'm just showing you that there's not a lot of space in here, but who cares? Like, if that fits your helmet and your racing gear, that's all you care about. Engine isn't the prettiest engine in the world, but it's functional. It serves its purpose by creating a lot of power and just making this car outlandishly quick and fun to drive. But yeah, very reliable because again, it is a Toyota motor. But that's pretty much it in the boot, guys, or the trunk, or the front, or whatever the hell you want to call it, the middle of the car, the end of the car, whatever you want to call it. That's the engine, that's the boot, we are done. Okay, so the interior. Most videos we talk on and on and on about the interior because there's a lot. This is gonna probably be the shortest one. So let's just go from the top. Radio air conditioning, that's it. I'm not joking, there's nothing else in this car. Like, yes, things are covered in leather, like the door sills, which are huge, like outlandishly huge. Like the monocoque in here is really small. Um, if you've got a friend in here, you're gonna be very close to him. So make sure you're close to that person because you're gonna be very, very close. Um, leather on the dash, um, leather seats, which they're not the worst, but they are race seats. So they're not gonna be comfortable by any means. Uh, you've got aluminium down here where there's like little cubby holes to put your stuff in, like you probably put a mobile phone or a wallet in there. Um, you got electric windows, um, aftermarket steering wheel, which is a racing steering wheel, which I quite like. It's actually small. Uh, it's nice to drive with. Um, and you've got a digital display, which the owner has stuck in, so this is aftermarket. Uh, it's got stereo, it's got a radio, which I don't know why you would have that. I'd rather listen to the motor, so I'd rather that out. I wouldn't even have it personally. You've got a sport, race, and normal mode. Thank God it doesn't have an eco mode, which this car should never have. That is sacrilegious if this car did have that. And it's got a fire extinguisher in case you, um, yes, you need to extinguish a fire. Um, but the best part of this car, the best part, is this manual transmission, this open linkage of s just seeing the gears. Like, that is awesome. Like, that is cool. I love that. And that is really awesome. The gearbox itself is phenomenal. I love how this car shifts. But yeah, again, again, leather on like that's been wrapped in leather. So it does look high quality and cool, but you don't really care about that. You, all you care about is how this car drives, which we will do now. All right, so still driving. I love how direct this car is. The nose just dives into corners and you feel it gripping and You'll see, and I just, oh, just love it. Just turn, it grips, it grips, add power, add power, add power, add power, add power. Add power. Yep. Oh, this car's insane, I love it. The amount of grip in this car is ridiculous. It does allow for a bit of playful slides in sport mode and race mode, but it, it knows, it, it reads, it knows how much to give and how much not to. The traction control on this car is actually quite fun and playful and allows for fun for like driving experiences with a bit of playful slides but control and that's the best part of it you're not you never feel in like you never feel out of control in this car you always feel in control and that's a great thing you never feel like you're unsafe or the car's going to do something unexpected it's pretty pretty controlled that's what i like about it and as a driver you feel confident in it and that's what i love about this car it's just such a good driver's car you could turn all the traction off if you wanted to and be a hooligan, which most of us would like to do and it's quite um, fun to do, but we only do that on the track, as we all know, to be safe and to be proper. But um, yeah, cars, just, I love that, that, no that noise the car makes, the backfires, everything about this is so good. Those backfires are real, by the way, they're not fake, it's not some sort of tune like most cars get, like a tune that allows for little pops and bangs, I'm talking about those GTIs, I'm not saying they're bad cars, I'm just saying it's all artificial and fake, it's all programmed where this does it naturally because it is a race car and on that, I love it, it's a race car. Okay, so we're going to do an acceleration test. Uh, quickly, power to weight ratio, 307 horsepower per tonne, which is insane uh, and we're going to show you how insane in a couple of minutes time. Um, now. <laughs> That's 
zero to the speed limit um, in no time, to be honest. Um, I don't know where you'd use this power besides using it on the racetrack because it gets there so quick. Like, ridiculously quick. It's insane. And for a rear-wheel drive car, I don't feel much uh, loss of traction in a launch. It actually grips up pretty well. Um, and I can't complain about that. This car actually grips quite phenomenal on a launch. And it's surprising. Alright, so I'm going to sum up the Lotus for you guys. Forgot to mention it is mid-engine, so I did forget to mention that in the video. I loved the car so much and was having so much fun, I forgot to mention that. But yes, it is mid-engine. Okay, so let's easily sum it up like this. The reason why this sports car, I think personally, is a better option than most, is because of the reliability of it. It has a Toyota motor and a Toyota gearbox, meaning serviceability is going to be easy and cheap ish compared to your other sports cars meaning parts are going to be cheap as well okay so that's one good thing about it another good thing about it guys is the way this thing drives it drives like a proper sports car because of the fact that it was bred on the racetrack before it hit the road okay so this is a racetrack for the road where most of your road cars are road cars then added add-ons go onto them to make them capable to go on track that's the reason why this car is so capable on the track and so in like insane to drive on the road like it's invigorating to drive on the road the way this thing makes you feel the way it handles it's just awesome so to end this video i'm just gonna make it really easy and simple before the video i thought you know what i love my m3s i love my c63s i like all my cars that are top spec of their range right and i would love to own one of those one day but in all honesty i'd rather drive around in a day-to-day -day run around and drive this thing on weekends. Seriously, it's my honest opinion. I'll drive like a standard Golf or something standard during the week just to get me by and then look forward to driving something like this on the weekends. The way this thing drives, it just puts a smile on your face. Yes, it's impractical. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it doesn't have any boot space, etc. Et but you don't care. You look past all that because the way this thing makes you feel. And for that, I'm gonna say Lotus, you've done such a great job with this car. I can't fault it because at the end of the day, YOLO, it's a race car. All right, guys, I'm going to keep it real easy. We're at Burger Point in Marsden Park. We're going to get a sick feed. We're going to review some burgers. We're going to tell you what we think. And then hopefully, by our recommendations, you'll come and check out this burger joint. So let's just go. Alright guys, so we've got Mad Chook and Marvin Glaze. Also we have a loaded fries and we've got a purple dolce and dipping sauce. Look, the guys have looked after us, we really thank them. Now it's time to eat. So first of all, I will start with the chips, then I'll go into the chicken burger. Jake will eat the beef burger, which looks insane. And then we'll try out that dipping sauce, plus I'll have the purple dolce, which I've already had and it's actually quite nice. But let's start with the chips to begin with. These look insane. It's like mac and cheese on chips. That's actually really nice. The cheese is just, it honestly tastes like mac and cheese. Seriously, on chips, it's sick. All right, I'm gonna eat this off camera because otherwise I'm gonna eat the whole thing. So, taste, great. Chips on the other hand, I like my thick chips, but these thin chips, these fries are actually really nice. It doesn't just feel like I'm eating oil, it actually feels like I'm eating a chip that's got potato in it. So, awesome. Now try this. Okay, that's really, really nice. <laughs> that's really good, really, really good. It's sweet, it tastes awesome. It just tastes purpley. That's what it tastes, it tastes purpley. It's actually really, really good. All right, let's get into that burger. All right, so we've got the mad chook here. So. You can obviously see the burger like that, but I'm gonna give it a cross section. So I'm gonna pull this thing out, 
cut it in half so we can see what the cross section of this thing looks like. All right, I'm destroying the burger. <laughs> All right, let's cross section this baby up. Can I get my hands under it? Yeah. Come on, separate. Ooh. Okay, that looks really good. Now, before I even eat it, you can see that the chicken's really juicy, so it's nice. It's not dry inside. Then you've got a cold slaw, as I can see, and then you've got a lettuce leaf. Now, as always, you know that I don't like these buns, but I'm not gonna judge it on that. I'm gonna judge it on how all the flavors are together. All right, is there another great chicken burger? The crumbing is fantastic. The coleslaw works perfectly, and that mayo that they got on top, it's just divine. This burger actually tastes really good. I actually forget about that it's got this bun on the top, which we all know that I don't like. So everything about this is actually pretty good, man. It's pretty decent. So I would rate this burger, guys, probably around about an eight and a half out of 10. It's actually really nice. The crumbing is fantastic. The only downfall is that the chicken's a bit big for the burger, okay? But that's about it. Other than that, it's awesome. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> I thought you were laughing. As I was saying before, Charles was dying of a cough. Um, <laughs> the chicken is a bit too large for the burger, but who cares? Like at the end of the day, just eat the chicken around the edges and then eat the burger smaller anyway. So it doesn't matter about that. But I love this chicken. Chicken's actually really nice. It's really tender in the inside. It's got a lot of flavor. It's not dry in the inside at all. So guys, good job at Burger Point. I really like this, guys. Thank you. It's really, really nice. Um, now it's time for Jake to actually have a bite of his beef burger and see what he thinks. All right, as you can see, Jake just took a bite of the burger and his words, his words was, it's a sin how much I like this. <laughs> so Jake, tell him what you think. Well, I'll be honest, I was, I, I was hesitant. I was hesitant leading up to this burger. It's a donut and beef with like some cheese on it. I'll be honest, I had low expectations and I'm pleasantly surprised, and I also hate myself. So, there's that. Uh, it's a good burger, however, I have to go home and look myself in the mirror tonight for eating such a monstrosity. But yeah, it's very good, so thank you. So, from that I gathered that Jake rates that easily a li literally nearly a 9 or even a 10 out of 10, don't you think, Jake? Yeah, that, that looks insane. Unfortunately, I don't eat it, I don't eat beef. I'm sorry guys on the channel, just don't, okay? Um, I do eat chicken, I know it doesn't make any sense, but it's me, so just deal with it. The chicken's amazing. So, I've had the chicken, I'm gonna eat the rest of it after I finish this. I really, really like it, I enjoyed it. I think Jake's really enjoying that. The shakes are really good, and the chips are really good. Look, guys, they've really looked after us. The burgers are insane here, the smoothies are insane, all the milkshakes, and the chips are insane. We're gonna finish this off, wrap it up, and then we'll give you a final verdict once this is all done. So let us enjoy our food and we'll catch you there. So I demolished the chicken burger, easily an eight and a half out of 10. Really enjoyed it, worked very well, loved everything about it. Jake didn't finish his burger because he almost had a heart attack and died. I can't believe he's filming this still. I also haven't finished the chips, which as always, we'll take those home because they were amazing. And we'll take the dipping sauce home and we'll finish that in the car. But all in all, thank you guys at the Burger Point. Guys, please come check them out. Their link will be in the description below or just below the video right here. Um, very cool place they looked after us really well we thank you a lot guys thank you so much um i can't really fault the food food's great um we really haven't been disappointed lately guys honestly every place we've been to has been pretty pretty decent so on that end of note subscribe like the video and we'll see you on another episode of the gcb